Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if All Might was killed by one for all, and left Izuku alone to defeat him, part 1. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Moose96, link is in the description, also subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's begin the video. The ground shook, as the world's number one hero, All Might, clashes with his arch nemesis, the world's most powerful villain, all for one. The world watched, and was taken aback. For as long as All Might has been a pro hero, he never struggled in a fight. This time however was different, the crowd gasped in horror, as their number one hero was pushed back yet again. His small, fragile skeleton forms leaking blood, his secret now exposed to the world. No. He can't keep up like this. Izuku thought to himself. This is my fault, if he hadn't given me one for all he wouldn't be so weak right now. Izuku Midoriya, he's the one you passed one for all onto isn't he? The menace known as all for one taunted. Izuku felt his heart skip a beat, he remembered the shivering and paralyzing fear he, Kirishima, Yeoirozu, Iida, and Todoroki experienced seeing all for one up close. They were no strangers to villains, from the USJ attack to the ambush at the summer training camp, they had all shown they could fight and win against the strongest of villains. This thing on the other hand, he couldn't be human. And he knew of Midoriya's identity. He came here without you asking, looks like you'll die full of regret, as a failure, as a hero, and a teacher. Afo cried, as he slammed a multi-quirk into All Might who could barely hold it back. You're right. He grunted, pushing back. I failed him, as a teacher, but, as a hero, I couldn't be more proud. All Might roared, as he lunged forward. The two continued to exchange blows, as the sheer wind pressure of their hits leveled nearby buildings. A clever trick, that's so unlike you. Afo taunted. Still weak though. That's because I didn't put my back into it that time. All Might cried, as he remembered back to his master Nanashimura's words. One for all will bring the world hope, and now it's your turn Toshinori, do your best. All Might concentrated, as he tapped into one for all's ancient masters, and unleashed all his power for one last blow. Goodbye all for one. He thought, as he unleashed eight generations of pent-up rage and sorrow into one blow which struck the villain in the face. United. States of. Smash. All Might roared, as he plowed All for One into the ground, using his ultimate move with a force so violent it created a tornado, sending a nearby news helicopter hurtling through the air. Goodbye, One for All. All Might thought sadly, as his days, as the symbol of peace has now come to an end. He was quirkless, just, as he had been all those decades ago. The crowd let out a scream, as they chanted All Might's name. His last act, as the symbol of peace. He could now rest. All Might. Izuku cried in joy seeing his idol and master emerge triumphant. Young Midoriya, I he suddenly stopped as a spike impaled his chest, the world gasped as Izuku froze up in disbelief. How pathetic. All for one said standing up with a metal spike emerging from his arm. I knew you had grown weaker, but to not even be able to finish me off is truly disappointing number one hero. All Might yelled. Now that he was quirkless, he was as mortal as a newborn baby. All for one withdrew the spike, as All Might fell to the ground with a gaping hole in his chest. He choked on blood, as he gasped for air. No. Endeavor screamed, as the number two hero charged at Afo with murderous intent. With All Might gone, he could now never fulfill his dream of surpassing him. You're bothering me. Afo said, as he casually swung his arm which hit the flame hero so hard he flew several blocks into a skyscraper and was knocked out. Oh no. Yuraka said, covering her mouth in tears, as she watched this unfold on the television. Aoyama, Ashido, Sayu, Kaminari, Mineta, and many more watched in disbelief. Any last words All Might? Afo asked the dying hero. He will stop you. All Might said, referring to Midoriya. I have defeated and killed every wielder of one for all so far, he will be no different. Afo said. All Might let out one more agonizing gasp before falling limp. All Might was dead. Nearby news teams and heroes stood paralyzed at what they had just witnessed. If All Might couldn't stop this guy, who possibly could? Afo looked up and pointed his hand at a nearby woman who had gotten close believing All Might was victorious. Her camera aimed right at the villain whose face was broadcasted all across Japan. Izuku Midoriya, the one who now holds one for all, and All Might's successor. You are next. Afo said before firing a burst of energy which caused the camera to go out. He then used teleportation to get himself and his fellow villains away from the scene. Eku, what the hell was that? Bakugo asked in a rare moment of fear. Izuku however was too overwhelmed at what had just transpired. All Might is dead. How will I master one for all now? All for one is unstoppable. How can I hope to beat him? Izuku thought, as heavy tears fell from his eyes. Midoriya. Iida asked dumbfounded. Is All Might's successor? How can this be? Yeoi Rozu asked in tears. He has to fight that monster next. 
Todoroki said fearing for his friend's life. The heroes and rescue workers got to work cleaning up the scene and trying to trace all for one. The mood was somber and all was silent in the wake of All Might's death. Several heroes carefully picked up his body out of respect and carried it away so a proper funeral could be held. With the symbol of peace gone, it would be a whole new world for villains to rise again. The next few days were crazy to say the least. Among all other things, a proper funeral for All Might had occurred with officials, heroes, and citizens from countries all around the world attending. He had been buried in a cemetery with a golden statue of him standing above the grave with his signature smile, as if he was still on watch for evildoers. On his stone read this. Ashinori Yagi. All Might. Hero, Teacher, Friend. O Plus Ultra. All of UA was feeling the loss of their hero. No one was hit harder than Izuku. Classes had been suspended for a week, as all pro heroes were called to hunt down All for One. Endeavor was named the new number one hero, and with All Might gone, villain activity spiked. In the Midori residence, Izuku's mother Inko knocked on his door which had been shut for two days. Izuku? She asked. Her heart ached for her son. She knew how much All Might meant to him and that this must be killing him. Honey, are you doing okay? She called in again. No response. There's some pork and rice on the table if you're hungry. She said she wanted to go in there and hug him but knew that he was too devastated to talk to anyone right now. She slowly walked away as tears flowed down her eyes. In his room, Izuku simply stared at his All Might memorabilia, the comics, posters, action figures. He could almost hear his booming laugh followed by his catchphrase. I am here. I never even got to say goodbye. Izuku said sadly. He owed Almighty for everything, for pulling him out of his despair at not having a quirk, for giving him the chance to make his dream come true, and for being the father in his life that he never had. His phone buzzed again, but he didn't reach for it. He had been getting texts and calls from his friends and classmates all day. News teams had been harassing his household wanting to know what the meaning behind all for one's words were. Now that the secret was out, he'd be a target of villains and news media everywhere. He had spoken to the US about this and they agreed to take his mother into protective custody until all for one was imprisoned or killed. He had pro heroes Kamui Woods and Gang Orca guarding the complex. His phone buzzed again and he finally got sick of hearing it go off and reached for it. He received hundreds of missed calls and text messages, most were from Ieda and Yuraka with many more from others like Kirishima, Sato, Ashido, Yeoirozu, Todoroki and others. Even Bakugo had left a voicemail. Eku you bastard answer the damn phone. Your loser friends won't shut the fuck up over here till you do. Bakugo's angry voice yelled over the voicemail. Izuku actually felt a small smile crawl over his face for the first time in a week. Typical Kaken. Izuku said. He continued to scroll through the messages and saw many different ones. He came across a number he didn't recognize and clicked on the voicemail it had left. Midoriya is in Izawa. I know you're probably still mourning, but I need you to get to the UA as soon as you can regarding what All for One said. Izuku's eyebrows raised and tears stung his eyes. For a second he was able to forget about what was going on only to remain again. He knew that Eraserhead wouldn't be calling him unless it was urgent. He wiped his eyes, threw some essentials in his backpack and opened his bedroom door. He heard a commotion at the front door and could hear his mother and several other voices he did not recognize. Is Midoriya? Were you aware your son was All Might's apprentice? A nosy newsman asked Inko who was starting to get aggravated. No, now please leave. This is a hard time for my son. She pleaded. It wasn't in her nature to be combative, but the limits of her patience were being tested right now. Mom? Izuku asked as he saw his mother trying to get rid of the five news team reporters bugging her. Baby? She cried slamming the door on the news team as she ran up and hugged him. I'm so glad you're out of your room. Thanks mom. He sniffled. I need to go to the UA. But I thought classes were still out of session. She asked. The teachers need to talk to me about what All for One said. Izuku gulped. Just the villain's name invoked terror in him. Is it true what he said? Inko cried, putting her arms on her son's shoulders. That All Might gave you his power and that he is coming for you next. Yes. Izuku admitted knowing there was no point in hiding it now. He gave me his power which is why he lost to All for One and I just stood there and watched. Izuku. Inko cried holding her son tight. It wasn't your fault. Izuku collapsed and fell into a pool of tears. He still lives in you, his memory, and his power. He'll never really be gone. I never even got to say goodbye or thank you. Izuku screamed as his voice cracked. He had gone to All Might's funeral and paid his final respects, but he wished he could have done it in person. Izuku. Inko sniffled. I want you to train hard, I want you to beat that horrible man, I want you to be the new symbol of peace. Mom? He asked, shocked. 
Normally his mother would go nuts if he was doing anything remotely dangerous. I'm so proud of the man you're becoming. All those years of being bullied, and you're still such a sweet boy. All Might made the right choice when he chose you. Inko said. Now go, and be the hero the world needs. Thanks mom. Izuku said, hugging her one last time, as he left the apartment. He was careful to avoid news teams. He was thinking about using one for all to race to UA at super speed, but since he did not have a hero license, any damage his quirk caused he would be held personally liable for. He grunted, as Kamui Woods greeted him at the front. Good morning young Midoriya. The pro hero greeted me. Good morning Mr. Woods. Izuku said nervously. His inner hero fanboy would never die out. Where are you headed today? The hero asked. School, Mr. Izawa called me and said he needed me over there ASAP. Izuku explained. Oh racer, he can't give you poor kids a break. Kamui said knowing of eraser head's gruff and cold personality. Don't bother walking, I'll summon a ride for you. Reporters are everywhere like termites trying to get some answers. Thanks, I appreciate it. Izuku said grateful he wouldn't have to deal with the media. Listen kid. Kamui, Wood sighed. I know this is personal and in poor taste to ask, but. Yes it's true what he said. Izuku interrupted knowing exactly what he was going to ask. Oh I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. It's okay kid. Calm down. Kamui Wood said, shocked at the emotional display. Sorry. Izuku said. But yeah, All Might gave me his power. Well how about that? Kamui, Wood said. Guess that explains why you and him seem to have similar quirks. And now it's up to me to fight all for one. Izuku gulped again. Don't sweat it kid. Kamui Wood said not wanting the teenager to worry. We got every pro in Japan looking for him. We even got pros from America and Germany helping out. Jaeger and Yankee. Jaeger. Klaus von Braun. Germany's number one pro hero. His quirk allows him to manifest the qualities of wild beasts. Yankee. Brent Parker. America's number one hero. His quirk allows him to absorb kinetic energy and then expel it. The harder he is hit, the more powerful he becomes. Whoa. The hunting hero and the force hero. Izuku said with a bright look in his eyes. Well heroes of other nations were usually not talked about in Japan, as they never made any appearances. They were legends in their own right at the level of All Might in terms of power. Izuku was excited at the thought of meeting heroes from other nations. This all for one guy doesn't stand a chance against the pros. Kamui Wood said to encourage Midoriya though deep down he knew that to be a lie. All for one had taken down Best Genist and Endeavor with one hit and had killed All Might. He didn't doubt that Afo could take on all of Japan's pros at once. Looks like you're rude here. Stay safe out there. Thanks. Izuku said, as he got in a limo which sped off into the distance. This kid has to fight all for one, what were you thinking all might? The arbor hero thought to himself, as he sighed. I'm worried about him. Todoroki confessed. If that villain comes for him he won't stand a chance. Don't say that. Mina Ishida yelled. You've seen how strong Midoriya is. He can take him. You weren't there Ishido. Todoroki said, shivering at the memory. His power, his presence, was unlike anything else I've ever seen. He's right. Kaminari replied. The guy was so powerful, stronger than that brain thing that attacked USJ. How does he do it? Todoroki said. Keeping a smile on his face knowing of that monstrosity he is destined to fight. Because All Might always smiled, Deku wants to be just like him. Yuraka said, smiling sadly. All Might is gone now. Tokoyami said. I only hope it will turn out different for Midoriya. You don't think he can beat him? Yuraka asked, slightly offended. No I do not. Tokoyami said bluntly. If what they say is true, that Midoriya has All Might's quirk, how can he defeat those villains with so little experience when All Might who had a lifetime to master it couldn't beat him? Bakugo, you've been strangely silent. Yeoirozu finally said. It's nothing. He grumbled. The class knew something was bothering him. Ever since All Might's death, the resident rage monster had been uncharacteristically quiet and calm. Hey man if something is bothering you just let us know. Kirishima said. Of all the people in class 1A, Kirishima was the only one Bakugo considered an actual friend. I said it's nothing. Bakugo said again. Just leave me alone. What crawled up his ass? Jiro asked, twirling her earphone jack around her finger. He feels guilty. Iida finally said. What do you mean? Kaminari asked. He feels as if he is the reason All Might is dead since he got captured. Iida explained. How can you be so sure? Asui asked with her large hand touching her mouth. I was there. All Might didn't go all out because Bakugo was still there. By the time everyone was cleared out, he was already running out of strength. Iida said. Damn you really think that's it? Siro said, as he put into a sugar cookie. He may be a jerk, but he's still human. Todoroki said. 
He doesn't seem like the kind of guy to vent about his feelings, so the best we can do for him is to not mention it. Before anyone could say a word, the door to the common room in the dorm building opened, and in walked a familiar broccoli-haired freckle-faced boy. Midoriya. They all cried. Yuraka and Iida were the first to reach him. The zero-gravity girl wrapped her arms around him while Iida came up from the other side and embraced him. Eku we were so worried about you. Yuraka cried. Dika's face flushed red as he felt her chest push into his. Midoriya it was simply not the same without you. Iida cried. This calls for a celebration. Yeah. Mina yelled as she jumped in the air and almost fell onto Muruhagarik as she couldn't see her. I'll get some snacks soon. Sato said as he went to his room to bake some sweet goods. What are you idiots doing? A dark monotone voice said that cut through the commotion. All students gulped and froze as their homeroom teacher walked in looking as sleep deprived as ever. Oh Mr. Azawa. Iida said, snapping to attention. We were merely welcoming back our classmate sir. Midori I didn't call you here to have a party. We have serious business to discuss. The other faculty members are waiting for us. Follow me. Eraser had commanded. Yes, sir. Izuku said softly as he jogged over to his teacher. As for the rest of you, as always said. I don't care what you do, just stay out of trouble or I'll erase your quicks when you least expect it. Yes, sir. The remaining 18 students said. Now you have some explaining to do. As always said to Midoriya as they left the dorm building. In a faraway location in an abandoned town devoid of life. The stench of villainy was strong. Within one of the buildings was a well-maintained interior with a fireplace, couches, stocked kitchen and bar, and multiple bathrooms and bedrooms. Master. Tamura Shigaraki said as he knelt down. I am glad to see your fight with All Might went well. Thank you Tamura. All for One said as he slowly sipped on a glass of wine. All for One used to be a big drinker but could no longer feel the effects of alcohol. Being alive for so long with quirks that regenerated his internal organs had made him all but immune to alcohol intoxication. He now merely enjoyed the beverage for the taste and idea behind it. Unfortunately the battle does not end here. What do you mean? Without the symbol of peace, this so-called hero society will collapse. Tamura said. Yes All Might is dead, as is every wielder of One for All who dared to defy me. All for One said. However, One for All still lives on. How? All Might is dead, the quirk should have died with him. Shigaraki said in disbelief. Remember how I told you that One for All could be passed on? All Might was wise enough to do that before I destroyed him. The power is now in the hands of a young student at UA named Izuku Midoriya. All for one explained. Midoriya Tamura growled. I know I should have disintegrated him when I had the chance at them all that one day. Patience Tamura. All for one said. The boy is no threat. Sure he contains the only quirk with the capability of beating me, but he has no mastery over it. His body breaks if he goes too hard and without All Might to guide him, he will never learn its true potential. But even if he did, you could dispose of him easily. Tamura said. Not true. The only reason I defeated All Might was because his power was weakened from passing one for all to Midoriya. Had he been at full strength I for sure would have been defeated. All for one confessed. One for all grows more powerful with each person it is passed to. If young Midoriya were to reach its full potential, I may not be able to defeat him. Then we must kill him at once. Tamura said determined. Patience Tamura. You will receive my quirk, as promised, but first all obstacles must be destroyed. All for one said, taking another sip of wine. I do not intend to kill Midori immediately or quickly. No, I have something much better in mind. What would that be master? Tamura said smiling. All Might is the reason I am the way I am now, blind and disfigured. He died too quickly, but only because I had no other option. Instead I will destroy his successor slowly and painfully. Rip his soul and mind into pieces till he begs for death. All for one said sadistically. Your brilliance knows no bounds master, how do you plan to do it? Tamura asked. I shall show you no. All for one said. Kurajiri. Bring in the prisoners. He yelled. A black and purple appeared and out popped two people with Dobby and Kurajiri behind them. Here they are. Kurajiri said. The two prisoners looked terrified as they saw all for one, knowing that he had killed All Might. No need to be scared of my humble guests. All for one said standing up. He walked over to the woman who wore a yellow dress with long red bark tied in a ponytail. What is your name, young lady? Ttt Tika Y Y Yamagashi. She stuttered in fear. Tika it is so nice to meet you. All for one said. Tell me what is your quirk. Mm mind control. She choked out. How interesting. All for one said before turning to the bald man next to her. And how about you, kind sir? Yamukadamki. He said with more confidence than Tika. My quirk is amplification. Please do explain. 
All for one asked politely. It's useless to me since I have no other quirk. He gulped. But I can use it to amplify the radius of another quirk. If it's useless for you then you won't mind if I take it right? The villain asked, as he put his hand on Yamus's head. Wait. He screamed. Don't worry, it'll only sting a little. Yamu screamed, as he felt a powerful suction force on his body. He felt as if his organs were getting sucked out. Then in an instant it was over. He felt the pain go away, as he fell to his knees out of breath. He was distracted when he heard Tika screaming, as all for one stole her quirk as well. Very fine quirks you have. You have my thanks. All for one said flexing his fingers. Tamura, dispose of them, as you wish. Of course. Tamura said, as he walked up and wrapped his hands around the now quirkless people's throats. No. Tika screamed. No, please don't. Yamu screamed. Their neck slowly flaked away skin till it reached the muscle and bone. Tamura's decay worked its way across their body till both were nothing more than piles of dust. Now if you will all excuse me. I have something I need to do. All for one said, as he left the room. Midoriya walked into a conference room with a racer head. There he was in the faculty of UA Principal Nezu, Present Mick, Midnight, Cementus, Snipes, Ectoplasm, Vlad King, Power Loader, and 13. Izuku noted the absence of All Might and felt a tug in his chest. Izuku Midoriya, thank you for coming in. Nezu greeted me. I understand times are tough right now, but there are matters we need to discuss that cannot wait. Of course sir. Izuku said. Please take a seat. Nezu replied, as Midoriya and Eraserhead sat down. I assume Eraserhead informed you of the purpose of this meeting, yes? Correct. Izuku replied. Well then let's get to business. Nezu said, cracking his back on his chair. The villain known as All for One claims that you now have All Might's power, is this true? Yes it is. Midoriya said. He knew that a handful of teachers knew All Might's secret including Nezu and Recovery Girl. He could tell by the reactions of the other teachers that they had no clue. We need to know everything. Midnight chimes in. From the beginning. Yes. Izuku said. This is the story of one for all. Izuku went into detail on how all for one gave his supposedly quirkless brother a quirk which stockpiled energy. Unbeknownst to anyone the brother did in fact have a quirk that allowed him to willingly transfer his quirk. These two combined to create one for all. The room listened intently as Izuku explained how the brother wanted to end all for one's reign on terror but failed so he passed the quirk on. This process repeated from generation to generation, growing more powerful each time it was passed on. That's quite a story. Ectoplasm said. How was it that you came into wielding this power? It was about a year ago. Izuku said, as he told them how he was quirkless and desired to be a hero above all else. He went into detail about his encounter with All Might and the slime villain and how he ran to help Bakugo which inspired All Might. He then said how All Might deemed him worthy of one for all and trained him along with passing the quirk onto him. That explains why your body broke so much. Snipes threw in. A quirk with power like that must take years to master. Yes. As of now I can use it most, without hurting myself, 8%. I can use more than that, but my body breaks when I do. This kid without a quirk ran to help Bakugo when the heroes wouldn't. I can now see why All Might chose him. Eraser had thought. He had constantly been impressed by Midoriya, but this brought him a whole new respect for his student. This is certainly a lot to take in. Vlad King said. I never knew All Might was quirkless to begin with. Very few did. Nezu said. Only Recovery Girl, Gran Torino, Detective Tsukauchi, and myself knew. I assume there's a reason why no one else knew this. Power Loader asked. If the truth of one for all for our people would hound for it. Villains and heroes alike, desperate for its power. Nezu explained. So does this mean you will face that crazy villain? Present Mick asked Izuku. Yes, according to All Might, this is the only quirk that can stand up to him. Izuku explained. And what's to stop all for one from steaming this quirk? Eraser had asked. This is one quirk that he can't take. It can only be willingly transferred by the one who wields it. Izuku said. He entrusted his quirk to me, I will defeat all for one in his memory. He said proudly making a fist. The room looked at Midoriya with respect and pride. All Might would be proud of you. Midnight thought. This 15-year-old kid has such a huge burden. Present Mick thought. In that case Midoriya. Your schooling will be suspended till a later date. For now, focus on training to master your quirk so you can defeat this menace. Nezu said. Yes sir. Izuku said, smiling proudly. He was going to make All Might proud. Wow. Jiro said with a look of shock on her face. Little guy has a sack on him, that's for sure. She said, as she pulled her earphone jack out from the wall. I can't believe you could hear from that far. Mineta said. I've been training. Jiro said. Midoriya is so manly. 
Kirishima said, throwing his fist up. Our little guy is gonna fight all for one huh? Mina said nervously. I can't believe we listened to a private meeting. Iida cried disgustedly. You were listening to Iida. Asui said with her tongue hanging idly out her mouth. Odd Iida said to himself upset at their break of protocol. But someone like Midoriya how are we supposed to ever catch up? Kaminari jokes. True, but I must say I don't envy him. Aoyama said. Speak for yourself. Toru said. I don't think I could ever fight someone like that. You didn't even see him firsthand. Kirishima said. Even Bakugo was crapping his pants. I was not Dumbus. They heard Bakugo yell from his room. How did he even hear that? Yayoi Rozu asked which caused everyone to chuckle. How's he doing? Mina asked Kirishima. Todoroki put it best, he won't talk to anyone about it. Not even me. Kirishima. Maybe I could talk to him. Mina said. Maybe all he needs is a woman's touch. Upon hearing this, Mineta almost fainted. Hey Ishido. Mineta said, drooling. You know I could use a woman's touch too. Enough out of you pervert. Yayoi Rozu said, whacking him with a frying pan she created. Good luck. Kirishima said, as Mina left to go to Bakugo's room. She skipped until she approached his door and gave a tuneful knock. Wake wake Bakugo. It's me. Ashido. She said in a sing-song voice while giggling at a rhyme. Oh way bubblegum abomination. She heard him yell. Normally she would get very upset if someone called her that, but knew it wasn't personal. Bakugo has demeaning nicknames for everyone in the class, Deku for Izuku, Rich Bitch for Yayoi Rozu, Diabetes for Sado, Testicle Head for Mineta, and so on. I just want to talk. Mina said, shifting to a more serious tone. We are worried about you. I don't need anyone's help. Bakugo yelled. Of course you don't me. I'm perfect. Mina mumbles. She then thought of something that would for sure bring him out. I hooked up with Izuku last night. She yelled. She immediately heard feet hit the floor and ran before the door swung open, revealing a smoking Bakugou. What? That virgin loser got some before me Bakugo yelled angrily. He hated that Midoriya was starting to beat him and everything. He'd be damned if Midoriya got laid before he did. Mina decided to keep it going to get him to the common room where he could talk about his guilt. Yeah it was great. Mina said with dreamy eyes. He was good too. Damn it. Bakugo screamed, throwing a nearby garbage can. No. I refuse to believe it. The loser is too much of a pussy to talk to girls. Let alone rock the sheets with one. Don't believe me? Come ask everyone. He's been with Yuraka and Yayoi Rozu too. Mina said smiling, as her plan was working. No. He yelled, as he sprinted to the common room where everyone was seated. They all jumped when they saw Bakugo half-naked, wearing only his boxers jump on the couch. You. He said pointing to Yayoi Rozu and Yuraka. Did you fuck Deku? The room went dead silent, as both girls dropped their jaws. What? Yuraka said blushing at the thought, but furious at the accusation. Did you sluts fuck Deku? Bakugo yelled, as Mineta nearly fainted from jealousy. Damn who would have guessed Midoriya was a slayer. Kirishima chuckles, proud of his little buddy. Bakugo felt a metal rod hit him in the face and fell backwards. He grabbed his pounding skull and looked up to see Aoi Rozu with rage in her eyes. You'll call me a slut again and I'll bash in your skull. You got that she yelled in his face. Why you Bakugo began to say as Mina walked in with a nervous smile. Sorry guys. She said nervously. It was the only way I could get him to come out. What? Yuraka said. What the heck Mina? I must say that was quite unbecoming of you. Iida reprimanded. Wait so, none of you fucked him? Bakugo asked. No. Yuraka and Yayoi Rozu screamed. So is Deku still a virgin? Good. Bakugo said relieved. Dude, I'm pretty sure we all are. We are only 15. Ajiro said. Shut up. I could get a different girl every night if I wanted. Bakugo proclaimed. I'm sure you could. Kirishima said. Can you please put on some pants for crying out loud? Take these. Yayoi Rozu said angrily, as she threw a pair of sweepings she made at Bakugou. She was still very mad at him for calling her a slut. Bakugo angrily put the pants on and crossed his arms. What do you losers want? Bakugo asked, noticing everyone looking at him. We know something's up. Kirishima said. You've been more angry than usual. It's about All Might isn't it? Iida boldly asked. Shut up. Bakugo said dangerously. You feel guilt. Iida continued. I said shut up. He repeated with a slight choke in his voice that everyone could hear. It was rare to see Bakugo tear up, but his eyes became wet with tears. He's right, and you know it. Todoroki stated. You feel All Might's death is your fault for being captured. Of everyone in the room. Todoroki was the only one who could stand up to Bakugo in terms of power if he went berserk. What the hell do you know I see hot? Bakugo replied before finally breaking. 
Yeah. I do feel bad. If I hadn't gotten captured by those ass villains, then he could've fought that guy at full power cause I wouldn't have been there holding him back. He's dead because of me. Are you happy he finished out of breath and was sweating? Damn man, I didn't know you felt this way. Kirishima said, putting his hand on Bakugo's shoulder. Bakugo? Toru said, wrapping her arms around him. He couldn't see her, but could feel her arms around him. We wanted to blame you, I tried to. Yuraka said. I never liked the way you treated Izuku. I wanted to pin this on you, make you feel bad. But no matter how many times I thought about it, you had nothing to do with his death. All Might was doomed the moment he faced him. Todoroki said. He has been severely weakened. Screw this. Bakugo said, as he got up and stormed out of the room. He would never admit, but he did feel much better getting off his chest. Midoriya left the meeting and walked back to his dorm room. He was feeling conflicted, he was renewed with vigor to defeat all for one, but also knew, as he was now, he didn't stand a chance. He was going to have to find Gran Torino again which Nezu had assured him they would take care of. He found it ironic how a little over a year ago he was so desperate to become a hero, and now right out of the beginning, he was going to have to face the most powerful villain in the world. He knew that since his academics were being suspended along with the provisional license exam he was going to be held back. He didn't care though, he needed to master one for all, and fast. He opened the door to the building and saw it was mostly empty. It was late at night meaning everyone probably went to bed. He went to the elevator to go to his room but decided at the last minute to take the stairs. Any bit of training helps. He said as he walked up the stairs. He came to his floor and walked over to his room. He pulled out his keys he kept around his neck and unlocked it. He proceeded to toss his bag on his bed and take his shirt off to change into his pajamas. He looked at himself in the mirror at his physique. While he did have muscle on him, he was not as buff as Sato or Shoji, but knew with a flick of his fingers, he could destroy this whole building. I need to be patient, I only got this power recently, it will take time before I can what? He yelled seeing Yuraka standing at his doorway. Her face flushed red seeing her crush shirtless. Oh hey Chako. He said, as he ran to put a shirt on. Can I help you? Can I come in? She asked, as her heart rate climbed. I'm yeah, let me just get changed first. He said slowly, shutting the door and putting his pajamas on. He opened the door again to see her twirling her hair with her finger. Come in. He said leaving the door propped open. He knew you a dorm policy was that the door had to be open if someone of the opposite sex was in a room with you. She walked in and smiled sadly at all his All Might merchandise. You miss him don't you? She asked. Yeah. Izuku confessed. If it wasn't for him I'd still be quirkless and with no friends. I would have never met you all. I bet he's really proud of you. Yuraka replied, as she sat next to him on his bed. He always kept a smile on his face to assure people everything was alright because he was there. Izuku said. I try to do the same, but it's hard knowing what I have to face. Izuku. She said, as she moved her hand on top of his. Izuku turned blood red and hyperventilated as a girl touched him for the first time. He suddenly felt himself lift into the air. He yelled squirming in midair. Oops. Yuraka said laughing as she put her hands together. Release. Izuku came fumbling back down onto his bed and landed on his back on his bed. Sorry, I don't have full control over that yet. She said, embarrassed. Oh that was scary. Izuku said hyperventilating. Deku? She asked. Yeah? He replied. Are you really gonna fight that guy? All for one? She asked worriedly. I have to, it's my destiny as the wielder of one for all. Izuku explained. If not for that I at least have to beat him for all might. But he's so powerful. She said sniffling. What if you die? Ichako, I he said, as he was cut off she jumped on top of him and hugged him closely. I don't want you to die. She cried into his chest. Izuku was at a loss for words. He was torn between worrying that someone would catch them and starting a nasty rumor, freaking out that a girl was on top of him and wanting to ease Yuraka's mind. She lifted her head off his chest and stared down into his eyes her cheeks still wet from tears. Izuku gulped, she looked so pretty right now. She moved forward and lowered her face two inches away from him. Izuku's heart was beating a million miles an hour. Izuku, I she started to say before a blood-curdling scream erupted from the floor below. She immediately jumped off Izuku who got to his feet as well. What was that? He asked. That sounded like a Shido. Hurry. The two ran out and saw other residents coming out as well. This had better be important lest I return to my beauty sleep. Aoyama said, yawning. Hey come man. Sita replied. She could be in danger. Knowing Ishido, she probably saw a spider. Ajiro said, as the group ran to the floor where they saw all the other residents standing still in fear. 
why are you all just standing the Sito said, as he saw a dreaded figure holding a Shido by her head at the common area. Izuku froze, now desperately wishing it really had just been a spider. Hello young Midoriya. The man said. All for one. Izuku said going weak in the knees. The rest of the class was paralyzed in fear. Lem go. Ashido cried in between tears. All for one's girl on her skull slightly tightened making her scream in pain. Why you? Kirishima said hardening his body. Uh, uh young man. All for one said. These hands overpowered All Might's hardest punch. I wonder what would happen to this one if I were to squeeze. Put her down all for one. Izuku cried. I'm the one you want. So selfless, I see now why the hero killer spared you. You truly are a hero young man. All for one said. Truly All Might successor. Don't you say his name, you murderer. Izuku said in a rare moment of anger. The oath was dear to you I see. All for one said. Tsk tsk you are all so terrified, I can feel it. I can't blame you though, I'd be scared too. Ida. Shoji whispered with one of his arms. Go get help. I don't think he is a young hero. All for one said. If anyone leaves this room I'll pop this young lady's head off. Ashido let out whimpers of pain, as tears strolled down her face. What do you want us to do? Midoriya asked. You. All for one said. I want to fight you Midoriya. Izuku no. Yuraka cried. Don't listen to him. Ashido tried to say. It's a trap. I've had enough of you. All for one said squeezing her head enough to render her unconscious. Mina no. Hagra cried in terror. Hide me Midoriya. All for one said. Very well. Izuku said firing up one for all. Bright green stripes of power raced across his body. His eyes wore a look of fearlessness and determination. Midoriya. You can't Todoroki cried. Everyone stood back. Izuku commanded. The class looked in bewilderment as Izuku walked forward to face the monstrosity of a villain. His power output right now, it's unreal. Todoroki thought to himself. Put her down and leave my class alone. If you do that, I will fight you here and now. Izuku said, looking up at all for one. Such determination, how I wish you were one of mine. Very well, I am man of my word. He said dropping Ishido to the floor before jumping out the window into a field. Izuku quickly followed as everyone ran to Ishido. Ida, Get help now. Todoroki ordered. On it. He said blasting off. Izuku started all for one face to face with a tension so thick you could cut it. If I can land a couple hits to his head at 100%, K might be able to knock him out. I'll break my body, but I have no choice. 8% power won't even make him sweat. Izuku strategized. He powered up one for all in his legs and fired at full speed towards all for one. The sheer force of his takeoff blew down all trees and light posts in the area. He slammed into all for one who caught his arms and held him down. Just like all might, rushing and relying on brute strength. No strategy at all. Afo taunted. I said not to say his name. Izuku roared as he brought his foot up and kicked Afo at 100% power. He did not have time to change into his hero costume, meaning he did not have the specialized boots needed to absorb the shock. He cried out as he felt his whole left leg fire up in burning pain. Afo was knocked back several hundred feet as the shockwave shattered all windows within five miles. Holy crap. Sito cried. He got him. Yeoi Rozu said. He can do this. Todoroki exclaimed. Come on Midoriya. Everyone cheered as Midoriya wasted no time. He used his good leg to launch off again towards Afo. Detroit. Smash. He yelled sending his left right arm at full force into Afo's head, hoping this would be enough. All for one was smashed into the ground so hard a crater over 200 feet deep formed. The villain's mask had shattered leaving his deformed face exposed to the world. I did not think he would go full power. Afo thought, clutching his head in pain. It doesn't matter I suppose, his leg and arm are broken now, meaning he won't be standing for very long he was caught off guard as he saw Izuku beneath him with his right arm raised. No. Afo yelled. Detroit, smash. Deku screamed as he again launched the full power of one for all onto the villain. The villain was flung into the air for thousands of feet while Izuku used his remaining limb to launch himself up and came above Afo. Full cowl. He yelled delivering a kick so powerful it cleared all clouds in the night sky and sent Afo hurling to the ground so fast it was impossible to see. Afo landed in the ground creating a shockwave that was felt for miles. Izuku smiled at his work before remembering he was thousands of feet in the air. Oh no. A fall from this height will kill me. All my limbs are broken he thought as he hurtled to the ground. He gulped as he saw the ground zoom closer and closer before he felt himself stop. He slowly opened his eyes and saw hands wrapped around his chest. The Chako he asked to see his friend holding him and gently going to the ground. You did it Deku. She smiled. You beat the snot out of him. I did. 
he said happily before realizing something. No, if it went down that easy then All Might would have had no trouble with him. He thought as they landed and Yuraka released herself and him. She was careful to put him on his back knowing his limbs were broken. Get out of here. Izuka yelled as black tendrils wrapped around him and hoisted him in the air. No. She screamed. Come on, do it now. Bakugo yelled as he, Mineta Todoroki, Aoyama, Kaminari, Koda and Yeoi Rozu used their quirks to blast all for one at a distance. Their attacks hit, leaving a massive pile of smoke only to disappear and reveal Afo's arm heavily muscled and metallic by combining multiple protection quirks. You gotta be kidding me. Bakugo yelled. Izuka yelled as he was slammed into the ground repeatedly from the tendrils before being dropped at Afo's feet. A valiant effort, but fruitless. Afo said stomping on Midoriya's broken limbs eliciting a pain level Izuku didn't think was possible. His scream of pain was so loud his vocal cords tore and the overwhelming pain made him wish he could die. Get off him you bastard. Kirishima yelled, hardening his skin and punching Afo as hard as he could only to no avail as the villain delivered a kick which sent Kirishima tumbling across the courtyard. Bright searchlight suddenly lit the area up as the sound of helicopters whirred overhead. Hands up. All for one turned to see a massive police blockade with dozens of pro heroes surrounding him. He could see Endeavor, Hawks, Best Genist, Midnight, Mount Lady, Death Arms, and many many more. They're surrounded, hands up. The police chief said over a megaphone. Midoriya looked up about passing out from pain and smiled at seeing the best pros were now here. Just as I planned. AFO said, raising his hands. Endeavor and several others moved in. Izuku looked up and saw Afo smiling. He didn't know what he was going to do, but he had something planned. No stay away. Izuku yelled as Afo brought his hands together. A surge of energy spread across for hundreds of miles as everyone fell to their knees. Izuku's eyes went wide as he saw everyone fall down. What did you do? He asked through the pain. You'll see young Midoriya. Afo said smiling. Izuku looked over to see Uraraka walking towards them. Machako don't. Stay away from him please. His cry went ignored as Uraraka continued to approach. No stop. He cried in desperation not wanting his friend to get hurt. She came right up to the two of them and looked Izuku right in the eye. Ichako. He screamed as she kicked him in the broken leg. Izuku felt tears roll down his face in agony as his broken leg burned. What are you doing? He cried as she hit him again bringing the pain back. Don't talk to me, villain. She said hatefully. Izuku looked up to her in disbelief before turning angrily to all for one. What did you do to her? He angrily asked. Opened up their eyes. Afo said chuckling. There? He asked before receiving a punch to the stomach from Ida. He looked up and saw all his classmates glaring hatefully at him. He's all yours. Don't kill him, other than that, so whatever you want. Afo said as he walked away. Bakugo grabbed Izuku and threw him to the ground as Asui, Yeoirozu, Sido, Ida, and others brutally beat him. Guys please stop it's me. He cried out as his assault continued. Now the villain begs for mercy, how pathetic. Bakugo said pinching Izuku right in the gut, causing him to spit blood. Stop all of you. Izuku looked up to see Eraserhead with a hateful glare. He said not to kill him remember. Let's burn his chest. Yuraka sadistically suggested. Can you brand him Todoroki? Of course. Shoto said, igniting his hand in fire. Izuku's eyes widened as his skin began to burn from the flame as it slowly approached. Once it made contact Midoriya let out one more scream before succumbing to the pain. The last thing he saw was someone kicking and fighting his turned classmates. It is an understatement to say Izuku was in agony. His body was broken, covered in bruises and burns. His mental anguish from his own friends attacking him. Before he passed out he saw someone fighting off his classmates, but he awoke to find himself in a bed with food and water nearby. He was comfortable in a thick mattress with blankets and a comfy pillow. Something he wouldn't expect from all for one. He slowly opened his eyes as he took in his surroundings. He was curious to know where he was at. There was no way Afo would have given him such comfortable quarters. He had casts round his limbs and a nearby bottle of painkillers indicated to him that someone was taking care of him. He didn't know who, but he was grateful. His mind wandered back to the last thing he remembered. Fighting all for one and destroying his body in the process, the arrival of the pro heroes and his friend savagely beating him. He felt tears sting his eyes remembering the first friends he ever had being so cruel and hurting him. All for one has to have done something to them. They would do that to me right he pondered as he was interrupted by a voice. Stop fidgeting idiot. Do you want to heal or not? Izuku froze in fear knowing that voice. He turned his head to see Mr. Azawa in the room with him. His chest rose in fear as he hyperventilated not wanting to be hurt again. 
Tears rolled down his eyes in fear and anxiety as his teacher stood up and approached him. Calm down Midoriya, I'm not one of them. Eraser had said. I I saw why you. Izuku whimpered like a cornered puppy. Why you were helping them. Oh yeah sorry about that. Eraser had said. I had to keep them fooled. What? Izuku asked in disbelief. This man had allowed his suffering to continue. When all for one activated that mind control thing, I used my quirk to stop knowing something was up. Normally I would have stopped it, but I guess because his quirk is taking others, it doesn't have the same effect if he uses one he stole. Eraser had explained. No leave me alone. Izuku cried. Prove you're not one of them. Four broken limbs, just as idiotic as you were the first day when you broke your finger to throw that ball. Azawa said recalling his first day at UA Izuku's breathing began to slow down. So it is you. He said relieved. Why aren't you trying to hurt me like they did? When all for one raised his hands I saw he was smiling. I knew something was up so I used my quirk, but because it was a quirk that wasn't his, I guess all my quirk did was prevent me from suffering its effects. When I stood up after the blast I saw everyone muttering how they were going to kill the villain, referring to you. I couldn't blow my cover so I acted as if I was one of them till all for one was a decent distance away before I acted and got you out of there. He explained. What happened? Izuku asked. Why did they hurt me? It wasn't them, at least their true selves. Azawa explained. I hypothesized that Afo used some kind of mind control that altered their memories into believing you were an evil villain deserving of torture. Azawa knew Midoriya was an emotional one, but even a pro would have trouble processing this. But they're my friends. He cried. I can't hurt them, no matter what. Midoriya. Azawa sighed. I know this is hard with All Might passing, and now this, but there is nothing you can do right now. No. I won't let him control them. Midoriya cried. So what are you gonna do? Azawa asked sternly. You broke all your limbs using full power, and that wasn't enough. Not only is he hunting you, so is every pro in Japan and most of the population. What do you mean? How long was I out for? Midoriya asked. A week later, he used the pros under his control to create martial law in Japan and took it over. Other countries are preparing intervention in case of attack. Azawa said. Japan is not safe for you. What about my mom? Is she okay? Izuku asked. This fucking kid. Never once thinking about himself. Eraser thought. Listen, she too is under Afo's control. I saw it myself. No mom. He yelled. This was too much for him to bear. We are getting you out of here. Eraser said. And where? Izuku asked. America, he can't reach you there. Luckily Gran Torino was on vacation so he didn't get affected by Afo's mind quirk. You will get there and train under him until you can defeat the villain. Eraser commanded. What about you? Izuku asked in concern. I must stay here, I am the only spy that can get info. Eraser explained. I will do what I can to liberate those under his control. Mr. Azawa no. If he finds out you'll die. Izuku protested. This is not up for debate you brat. Azawa replied. Right now no one on the planet can stop him, but you. All Might died believing you could do it. Don't you dare insult his memory by dying stupidly. All Might. Deku said to himself wishing now more than ever his idol and teacher were here with him. What do you think he would have done? I don't know, but he was the best for a reason, he would have found a way. Azawa said sadly. I wish he was here, now more than ever. Izuku mulled. Aside from Eraserhead, he was alone now. Me too, kid. Azawa said. You know during the USJ attack when that Noma thing hit me pinned I was fading in and out of consciousness. I could see the oaf and hear him going I am here. It gave me a sense of security just knowing he was there. As always said, allowing a rare smile to encompass his face. This is no time to mourn. We need to get you out of here. But how? Izuku asked. There is a small boat waiting on the shore in a rural area to take you to Hawaii, from there you'll fly to America. As always said. All the airports are controlled so going by plane is out of the question. But I don't know how to sail. Izuku said. That's fine, you won't be driving the boat. As always said. Yeager and Yankee will be getting you out of here, but first I need to escort you. I can't move though. Izuku said. Which is why I have to carry you on my back you shit. Azawa said, throwing on a baby carrier for his back. Midoriya cried with snot coming out his nose in a comical fashion. Shut up before I leave you here. Azawa said. You've been getting painkillers so it shouldn't hurt too bad, but it will still sting. He said, as he slowly put Midoriya in the baby carrier. And believe I have to carry this brat like he's one of mine. Joke if you could see me now. He thought sadly. The smiling hero Ms. Joke has also fallen victim to all for one's control and would most likely kill Midoriya on the spot. Once he strapped Midoriya and he put him on his back and walked out the door. 
it's gonna take about a half hour for me to walk to the boat. You don't make a sound, understand. As far as they know I'm one of them unless they see you. Then we are both dead. As Awa ordered. Yeah I got it. Midoriya said sadly. Put this over your head so no one sees you. As Awa said, giving him a blanket which Midoriya put on his head to cover him. While he couldn't see anything, he could hear Eraser had opened doors and the sound of gravel crunching under his feet. Eraser looked off into the horizon and could see a giant woman overlooking a town. He got Mount Lady too, Unreal.he thought. He had never been a fan of the heroine due to her pompous attitude, but he still respected her strength. We will be in big trouble if she discovers us. Even if I erase her quirk and revert her to normal size, it wouldn't take long for her to grow back and crush us while I blink. The journey went without event. All Izuku would hear was the occasional greeting to anyone passing by and the sounds of crickets in the night. Normally he would find it peaceful, but given the circumstances he was terrified. There. As always said, looking at a boat. Wait for my mark until I confirm they're with us. Izuku merely nodded, not wanting to risk making any noise. Hello stranger. An American voice called out. This has to be Yankee. The evening, tell me why you say that. Azawa asked. Because we are here. A man with a German accent replied. Midoriya, we are good, you can talk now. Azawa said. Izuku figured it was code talk to verify who was an ally or enemy. Quite a shit show here racer. Yankee said, as he helped Midoriya into the boat. Gran Torino briefed us on what was happening, but this is insane. You're telling me, I had to avoid a giant woman, an orca, a walking tree, and a fireball. As always said, referring to Mount Lady, Gang Orca, Kamui Woods, and Endeavor respectively. Let's get him loaded up, Yigger said before stopping to sniff using his wolf nose. You smell something? Yankee asked. There. Yigger said, as the four turned to see a tree branch snap out of nowhere. Damn it. Eraserhead said activating his quirk to at least stall the threat whoever it was. Slowly a naked young woman with long red hair and bright green eyes appeared out of nowhere. She had an angry look on her face from being discovered. The three pros tried to avert their gaze at the underage girl out of morality, but Izuku knew how it was. Mr. Izawa, it's Toru. He said, referring to the previously invisible girl. Agakur. Izawa said. Why are you helping the villain? She asked poisonously. Should get him out of here. As always said, as Yankee and Yigra pulled the anchor and started the motor. Suddenly a giant hand grabbed Azawa and squeezed tight. Eraser yelled as the pressure nearly broke his bones. Eraser. Yankee screamed. Well well well. The giantess said, revealing herself to be Mount Lady. What do we have here? She asked to bring the eraser up to eye level. My lady, be careful. Tamru cries as she flashed back invisibly due to Azawa no longer having his quirk active. If he uses his quirk he'll be small again. He won't do that. Mount Lady said, popping her hips out. If he does, he'll fall close to 60 feet, it will kill him. Put him down. Yigger growled as he manifested the arms of a gorilla. Or what tiny man? Mount Lady taunted. What can you do to me? Oh wow she's gorgeous. Yankee said, drooling much to Yigger's dismay. Are you kidding me right now Yigger yelled. I know you got a thing for big girls, but come on. Oh shit yeah sorry. Yankee said, getting out of his trance. Yeah come on you big bitch. What did you say? Mount Lady said, as she threw a massive fist at Yankee with the intent to smush him. He allowed the fist to hit him which while it hurt, he felt the kinetic energy come in and the shoot back out hitting the giant. She screamed as her blow reversed and let go of Azawa who tumbled to the ground. He was then lifted by Yeager who uses eagle wings to carry him to safety in the ground. Damn it. Eraser said, clutching his ribs. Mount Lady had done a number on him for sure. We have to go before more show up. Yankee ordered. They heard rumbling in the distance, as Azawa could spot the flames of Endeavor. Dead in the boat now. Azawa said, as the two other heroes jumped into the vessel. Eraser you coming? Yankee asked. No, I'll hold me off. Eraser said, unraveling his scarf. Oh no none of this cliche bullshit. Yankee yelled. No. You'll never make it other Azawa tried to say, as Yigra used gorilla arms to grab him from behind and throw him in the boat. Azawa tried to use his quirk to get free, but couldn't see the man because he was behind him. Yigra threw him on the boat before hopping on himself. You idiot. We will never get away. Azawa scolded. Oh I think we can. Yankee said, smiling. Hey Midoriya, can you hit me without fucking up your body? Huh? He asked, confused. I quirk, if I get hit, my body pushes it back out with equal force. I hear you got All Might's quirk, a good hit should do it. Can you hit me with anything that won't break? I might be able to headbutt you at low power, but Izuku tried to say not wanting to hurt the American hero. Just do it. Yankee ordered as he put his lower body in the water on the stern of the boat. 
As this happened, Endeavor finally broke the tree line with a dozen other pros. Don't let them escape. He yelled charging up a hell flame fireball. Midoriya now. Yankee yelled. Smash. Izuku yelled headbutting Yankee in the back at 8% power. Yankee yelled from the pain, but felt the kinetic shock travel through his body and fired off from the shoreline covering thousands of feet in a matter of seconds. Yeehaw. Yankee cried in victory as he flipped off the retreating coastline. Americans. Yeager scoffed as he activated the motor on the boat. The 60-foot motor boat spread away in the night till the coast was no longer visible. Damn that was close. Yankee said, breathing heavily. That was some power you got there kid. Thanks. Izuku said shyly from the praise. So how long till we get to Hawaii? Azawa asked. Normally. Over a week. Yankee explained. I'm sure none of us want to sit in the open ocean for that long, so I set up for a rendezvous with the US Navy before that, so they could snag this boat and we could get loaded up in a plane. It's about 200 miles from here. We should get there in 6 hours. Good, all this rocking interferes with my nap. As always said. So what is your plan? Yigur asked. Get the boy to Gran Torino so he can train him like he did all night. As Awa responded. Gran Torino? Yankee asked. Yeah I know that guy. He's in Chicago right now. My home city. Well at least we don't have to waste time searching for him. As always said. I had originally planned on staying behind and acting as a spy since they didn't know I wasn't under control, but one of my students managed to outsmart me, so it looks like I'll be staying with Gran Torino as well assisting Midoriya here. Sounds like a plan. Yankee said. Say kid, have you ever been to the land of the free before? Oh I know, but I've always wanted to. Izuku said, still snuggled up like a burrito. Don't get your hopes up kid. They're all fat and stupid like this one. Yeager said pointing to Yankee who looked offended. Oh go start another world war you alcoholic crowd. Yankee poked back. Izuku chuckled at their banter. It was nice to laugh after everything that had happened. I'm an alcoholic. You look like you're due in three months you fat fuck. Yeager yelled. Anything would look fat to you, you damn pencil dick. Yankee countered. Their bantering continued as Midoriya looked longingly towards his home. We will come back to Midoriya. You will defeat all for one and we will save everyone. As always said, reading his mind. I know, it just kills me to know they're all suffering and I can do nothing about it. Izuku said as he heard a beeping from the wheelhouse. The beeping was high-pitched and annoying. What did you order a double deep fried cheeseburger to deliver in the middle of the Pacific you lard ass? Yeager yelled. Oh shut up. It's probably your mommy Angela Merkel. Yankee retorted. Shut up both of you. As always said. Look, it's the radar. Everyone looked on the small screen to see several large objects approaching. Yeager immediately activated his cat eyes to see better in the dark. Please tell me that's the Navy. Yankee said. I don't see anything. Yeager said in disbelief. Whatever it is, it's underwater. They looked at the radar as the object seemed to be beneath them and then stopped. I don't like this. Yankee said as the boat suddenly listed to the starboard side as a massive whale used its tail to hit the boat. What the hell is that? Yankee yelled as another whale slammed the boat. Hucking whales. Yeager screamed as he tried to steer the ship away. Whales don't fucking attack. Yankee screamed. It's Koda. Izuku screamed. He's using Anubis. What? Azawa asked. Think about it, whales don't coordinate attacks like this. Who do we know has a quirk to control animals? Izuku explained as ocean water smothered the boat multiple times. Damn it. Azawa said. We are over a hundred miles offshore, he has this kind of range unbelievable. Damn it I'll take care of this. Yeager said. Take the wheel Yankee. Yankee ran and grabbed the wheel as Yeager's face turned into a beluga whale. He went to the stern and stuck his head in the water and unleashed a powerful sonar wave which hurt the whales. They moaned in pain and decided to stop listening to their commands to get away from the pain. They soon retreated leaving the vessel alone. Yeager popped his head out of the water and returned it to its normal shape. Looks like we are clear for now friends. Yeager said. Let's hope nothing else comes our way. Back in Japan, Koda pulled his hands out of the water in defeat. Well Endeavor asked aggressively. Koda looked at him and shook his head. Worthless. Endeavor screamed as he smacked Koda across the face. Koda rubbed his cheek in pain as no one came to his defense. So they got away. Best genus said. Yes, all for one will not be pleased. Endeavor said. But we will find them, no matter what. In Japan, all for one walked through a large park. He was quite satisfied, with All Might gone, his successor terribly injured, and everyone under his control, he felt jubilant. He stopped as he saw All Might's grave. The gold statue with his smile looked at All for One as if it were mocking him. Looks like I won. 
Afo said, as he used his many quirks to slash the statue in half and crush it to oblivion. Now you lay there dead, as I rule over all. This is your ultimate victory master. Tamura complimented. All of Japan is at your feet. Once I have finished young Izuku's torment, this will all be yours Tamura. Afo said which got the decay quirk user excited. My lord. Endeavor said, as he approached the two. I bring urgent news. And what would that be? All for one said. This had better be good. Midoriya has escaped with a racer head to America. Endeavor reported. Tamura gasped, as all for one stood silent. A tremble was felt in the ground, as Afo slowly turned to Endeavor. What? He asked angrily. It appears Eraserhead has betrayed your glory and smuggled Midoriya out of Japan to America. Endeavor explained. All for one felt anger rising in him, but quelled it, he found giving into rage to be a petty and childish thing. That is most unfortunate. All for one said, making a fist at his side in frustration. I also have word that Gran Torino is in America as well and plans to finish the boy's training. Endeavor repeated. This caught all for one's attention. He remembered after he destroyed Nanashimura that Gran Torino took an All Might and finished his training allowing All Might to become the nuisance he was. If Gran Torino trained Midoriya, he just might be a threat. Damn it. All for one cursed. We cannot let that boy be trained. Shall we send a party to stop him? Endeavor asked. Not you or any other pros. Your names and faces are public, you would be immediately noticed. Afo said. Send the children from UA, the sports festival is only broadcast in Japan, so no one will recognize them. As you wish, I'll assemble a small team. Endeavor said, as he walked away. All for one looked down at the broken statue of All Might and could see his face smiling at him. Damn you. All for one screamed, stomping on the head and shattering it. In the middle of the ocean on a bright day. A vessel carrying four heroes made his voyage to its rendezvous. Yeager and Yankee focused on navigation and steering while Eraserhead tended to Midoriya's wounds. He moaned in pain. Tears stung his eyes as his broken limbs flared up in agony. Here. Azawa said giving the boy three pills. Midoriya happily took them and a glass of water and gulped it all down. It might take a few minutes for them to get to work, but it'll make the pain go away. Eraser said. The pills he was giving him were powerful narcotics used to help injured heroes and citizens while waiting for doctors or healer quirks. Midoriya felt the pain slowly fade away as he was able to relax. Thank you. He said so happy that the physical pain was gone. Those are all you're getting for the next six hours. We don't need a hero with a pill problem or shot liver. Azawa said aware of the potential risks of these pills. I should be okay. Izuku said. He was still wrapped up in a bundle with his broken limbs sticking out in casts. Once we get to America there is bound to be someone with a healing quirk there. You'll be able to move again hopefully. Otherwise we will have to wait months for you to heal, in which you will lose all the progress you've made till now. Azawa explained. How do you think they are doing? My friends. Izuku asked about missing his comrades. He was worried that they were being tortured. Fairly well. Azawa said. It is merciful in an ironic way, they have no idea what they are doing. It's plausible that once the quirk is lifted they might not even remember it. Azawa hoped this to be true. He doubts anyone under all for one's control would be able to live with attacking citizens and Midoriya. Have you ever been to America? Izuku asked. Only on business. Azawa replied. I mostly stay in Japan where my agency is and given my quirk in particular I don't get much time off. To do hero work in another country requires a special government authorized permit. What was it like? Izuku asked, trying to take his mind off of everything that was happening. It's a lot bigger than Japan. All new quirks and all new heroes and villains you've never heard of before. He said. Are they really the way Yeager said they are? Izuku asked. Not all of them, yes some do fit that stereotype, but the majority are good people. It just so happens that Yankee exudes every stereotype of America. As always said. I've read about him, his fight with Muerto. Izuku said. The killing villain. He was a dangerous one that's for sure. As always said knowing Muerto all too well. His quirk caused immediate death to whomever he had skin-to-skin -skin contact with. It was like Tamura's decay only much quicker and more efficient. Yankee had defeated him and the villain had died in prison some time ago. He did feel bad for the man, growing up with a quirk like that would make anyone go crazy. You know it's kind of funny. Izuku said. When I was being attacked by the class I wasn't even bothered by Kakin. Why is that? Eraser was shocked that he would bring this up. Well it's usually not that different from his normal self. He said, as a bubble appeared over Deka's head with Kanchan's angry face in it. They'll kill you. Deku you bastard you're dead. I died I. Yeah, good point. As always said. That damn brat is making me go gray. I actually have a question for you. Izuku said. 
And what would that be? Azawa asked. It's about your quirk. Izuku said, looking away from his teacher. If he asks me that damn question I'm throwing his pain pills overboard. Azawa thought to himself. If you looked in a mirror and used your quirk. Would you erase your own quirk? Izuku said, smiling sheepishly. Shut up Midoriya. Azawa asked. He couldn't even begin to count how many people had asked that question, as a joke. Land homie lads. The Yankee roared out. Azawa and Izuku looked out the window and saw several large gray colored ships armed to the teeth. Yes that's our ride. Azawa said. The boat came to the largest ship's port side as ladders were rolled down for the pros to climb up. A helicopter helped to move Midoriya to the main deck where he saw dozens of men and women running around doing different tasks. He saw an elderly man in a khaki uniform walk up to Yankee and give him a salute. Good to see you Yankee. The man said. Pleasure is all mine Admiral. Yankee smiled as he saluted back. Our friends across the pond got quite a situation going on. I heard we are at Defkin 1 back home. The Admiral said. Wars were not so common anymore with the rise of quirks. They did still happen though, and the world was preparing for the worst. He then turned to Midoriya and Eraser. Sorry to hear about All Might, he was a joy to have in the States when he was younger. Thanks. Midoriya said missing his idol. We have a plane ready for you to take you to San Diego where you'll be transferred to another flight going to Chicago, as Yankee requested. The Admiral said. Also, while normally you would require a permit to use your quirks in America since you are not from there, the President has allowed an exception for you too given your situation. You are free to do hero work Eraserhead. He then looked to Midoriya who was in a wheelchair and saw how busted his body was. This kid can't be more than 15 years old, who the hell does this to a kid? The Admiral thought sadly. As for you, I'm not sure how Japan's hero school runs, but in America, anyone aiming to become a pro takes a series of seven tests when they turn 18 in order to get their license. Do you have Japan's equivalent? Then no sir, I never got the chance with the all-for-one attack. Midoriya explained. Well son unfortunately we can't have you using your quirk for hero work, especially if it's as powerful as I've heard. The admiral said before looking to the stern of the ship. Looks like your ride's all fueled up and ready to go, godspeed gentlemen. Likewise, sir. Yankee said. You coming Jaeger? No, I must return to Germany in case of an attack. Jaeger replied. Ah you bastard bring it in. Yankee said as the two heroes moved in for a quick handshake and hug. Stay safe out there you fattis. Yeager said smiling. Likewise Kraut. Yankee said Yeager walked to a different aircraft to be taken back to Germany. What? Midoriya asked, confused. They were at each other's necks for the last two days. Yankee and Yeager are close friends. Eraser said. They show their friendship through insults. I don't get it. Midoriya responded with confusion. Eraser had looked down at Midoriya. He knew that the kid had been quirkless and had been bullied relentlessly for it. He never had friends till he came to the UA, so he didn't have a full understanding of how friendships worked. You will one day. Eraser said as they boarded the plane. He pushed Midoriya up in his wheelchair as Yankee followed suit. Midoriya looked around, this wasn't anything like All Might's private jet that used to visit his old friend Dave Shield all those months ago. This was more dark and plain. It ain't exactly luxury airlines, but it'll do. Yankee said entering the cabin. In days of old, these planes would insert troops, vehicles, and supplies into war zones. Nowadays it mostly just functions as basic transportation. The three made their way to a seat as Yankee lifted Midoriya gently out of his chair and onto a seat where he strapped him in. I'm long overdue for a nap, don't wait till we get there. Eraser had said going all the way towards the back where he could rest his weary bones. Looks like it's me and you kid. Yankee said as he sat next to Midoriya. They felt the hum of the engines grow as the plane rocketed forward and slowly ascended into the sky. Midoriya looked out the window and saw the fleet grow smaller and smaller in the large blue ocean until his view was obscured by white clouds. You know someday I wish I had a quirk that allowed me to fly. Yankee said. Just be able to fly up and be free of gravity. Yeah gravity. Izuku frowned thinking of Yuraka. What was she going to tell him before All for One showed up? They had been in an extremely intimate position and she looked like she wanted to kiss him. You okay kid? Yankee asked noting how he seemed to stare into blank space. What? Izuku said, snapping out of his trance. Oh yeah I'm fine L. Thinking about home? Yankee asked, knowing exactly what was going through his head. Yeah. Izuku said. You know, I know you don't want to think about it, but given how I'm America's number one pro. Odds are I might have to square off against this all for one guy, I need to know everything about him so I can plan a strategy should the time come. Yankee explained. He had heard of all for one's power and was scared of it deep down. Well. Izuku said. 
As his name implies, he can steal quirks or transfer quirks to others. I don't know exactly how many he has, but I know he has immense strength and speed because he was able to go blow for blow with all might. He has some longevity quirk because he's been alive for well over a hundred years. He can also combine the quirks he has to make one powerful attack. Man I thought Muerto was tough. Yankee said. All I had to do against him was not let him touch me, he wasn't that powerful outside of that. That's why I didn't want to come. He's after me. Izuku said. What do you mean? Yankee asked. I know he called you out after that fight, but why is he after you? He said something about one for all, and stuff like that. That's my quirk. Izuku said. As was All Might's, he passed it on to me to become his successor. Izuku said. It comes from a long line of heroes, starting with All for One's brother who tried to stop him a long time ago. That's why he's after me, to destroy the one quirk that can stop him once and for all. Damn kid, how old are you? Yankee asked. 15. Izuku answered. I don't know how you're doing it. Yankee said. At age 15 I'd be pissing myself. Even for me, as I am now this would be a burden. I know, it's been really tough with everything. What's keeping me going is freeing Japan and stopping him for all might's sake. Izuku said. You'll get him, kid. Yankee said, chuckling. Just have to be patient. Hey, has anyone seen my guitar pick? Jiro asked, angry that she couldn't find her tool. Don't look at me, I don't even play guitar. Siro said, holding up his hands. Life at UA had pretty much gone on, as usual. All for one has little concern for the students and merely sets them to the side. He had pros and force martial law around the quirkless who were immune to his mind control due to not having a quirk. Those under his control maintained most of their previous personalities and memories. They simply were manipulated to believe Izuku was a dangerous terrorist that needed to be put down. Damn it all. Todoroki muttered in the corner. What's with you? Asui asked. We let that villain get away. Todoroki said, making a fist. And what's worse? Our own teacher betrayed us. I never thought Mr. Azawa was a traitor. Yayoi Rozu said, frowning. The doors flew open as Endeavor entered the building. Being the new number one hero, Endeavor served as all for one's deputy. Oh look who's here. Kirishima cried. Todoroki stole a glance at his father before looking away. Listen up runts, our lord requires a mission from you. This is the best class in the country and we bring a mission for you. Endeavor yelled. The villain Midoriya has escaped to America with a traitor Eraserhead. Due to the names and faces of pros being known globally, we cannot go there to find him. This is why we need a small group of you to hunt him down and bring him back. So who is going Kirishima tried to say before he was rudely interrupted. You'll be broken up into three squads. A stealth squad, your job will be to search and locate Midoriya's location. The capture squad, your job will be to chase down and restrain him and the combat squad to deal with resistance from heroes or law enforcement. The students looked up in shock that they had been selected for such a mission. The stealth squad will consist of Toru Hagakur, Mizo Shoji, Kaioka Jiro, Koji Koda, and Mina Ishido. The capture squad shall consist of Tsayu Asui, Minoru Mineta, Tenyu Iida, Achako Yuraka, Rikido Sado, and Hanta Siro. The combat squad shall consist of Katsuki Bakugu, Shoto Todoroki, Ijiro Kirishima, Momo Yeoirozu, Denki Kaminari, Fumikage Tokoyami, Yuga Aoyama, and Mashirao Jiro. Endeavor explained. This has been planned out and you were put into your squad based on your quirks. You will depart in the morning so get what you need packed tonight. Any questions? Endeavor asked the shocked students. When they did not raise their hand after Aminity decided to leave. I'll see you all in the morning. He said as he walked out. Well that was unexpected. Kaminari said, rubbing his head. Does this mean we get to go to America? Ashido cried in joy. We are going for a purpose. Iida scolded. This is not to be a vacation. It is for a noble cause. Take the stick out for your ass to blow hard. Bakugo grinned. I'm gonna find that villain and blow his insides across the damn wall. Enough you two. Yayoi Rozu ordered. We should all get to bed, we have a big week ahead of us. Agreed. Todoroki said as he headed towards his quarters. The rest of the class soon followed suit with the exception of Yuraka who stared out the window. I'll kill you. She promised before returning to her quarters. Izuku listened fondly to Yankee's stories of America and how great Chicago was. The pro's stories of home helped him forget what was going on. Oh, and just wait till you try deep dish pizza. I don't care what any New Yorker says. Chicago pizza is the best. Yankee boasted. You know Chicago was also the birthplace of the skyscraper, the first one was only 30 stories tall. Can you imagine that? Now look at the ones we build. Also the four cardinal sins of Chicago. First, never put ketchup on your hot dog. Second, never wear any Green Bay Packers merchandise. 
Third, never bring anything goat related to a Cubs game, and last of all, never ever refer to the Sears Tower as the Willis Tower. AU, these are all true BTW, not the pizza, since it's a matter of opinion or the sins of Chicago, but the first skyscraper fact is true. I don't know what a lot of that is, but I'll try to remember. Izuku said proudly. That's the spirit. Yankee said. Do they have pizza in Japan? Yeah, but it's not that good. Izuku said honestly. Well that's cause you've never had good Olay Murica pizza. Yankee said laughing. Why you know? Midoriya said, chuckling. You remind me of All Might a little. The man's charismatic and optimistic attitude resembled the symbol of peace. I actually met the big man a long time ago. Yankee said. Really? Tell me about it. Izuku beamed. Well after he graduated from UA, he stayed in America for a bit. I was a freshman at USHA, United States Hero Academy, he came to give lectures and helped us in making our ultimate moves. I wasn't the most ripped fella, as you can tell. Yankee said, smacking his belly. My quirk works so that the more fat I have, the better the kinetic conversion works. In high school, a lot of kids picked on me for being fat till all might said that it made my quirk work better. Thanks to him I became the number one hero in America. Yankee explained. Wow, that's so cool. Izuku proclaimed. Yup. Yankee declared. Man I wish you were 21, I'd love to show you some good American brews. Well even if I was, I doubt anyone would serve me. Izuku replied. In a quirk society, people were often limited to alcohol consumption. If they had a rather destructive or powerful quirk, alcohol was forbidden for obvious reasons. More benign and harmless quirks along with the quirkless were free to drink to their heart's content. That's why I love mine. Yankee declared. Only destructive if someone else hits me first, in that case it's self-defense. How does your quirk work exactly? Izuku asked. Well my quirk absorbs the force from which I'm struck with and channels it back into my body so I can strike back with equal force. Yankee said. If I got hit with a baseball bat in the gut I could punch with that same power. It ain't perfect though, if someone with a quirk like yours punched me full force I'd be shredded to my last cell, that's why I wear this trauma resistant suit to absorb most lethal blows. Yankee explained. Who are some other American pros? Izuku asked, loving the conversation. He wished he had his notebook to write this all down. Well we got Eagluing whose quirk gives him the abilities of a bald eagle. Then we got Spangle who can shoot explosions from himself. And last, but not least we got Lady Liberty. Yankee said, sighing. Most gorgeous thing you ever did see, her quirk allows her to undo the effects of another quirk on someone. Wait. Izuku cried. So she could undo all for one's mind control. Ain't that simple, she has to touch the head of the one she wants it to work on. Yankee said. Don't think anyone's just gonna let her do that. She also only heals quirk-related wounds. Let's say you lost an arm to an explosion quirk, she could heal it back to normal. If you lost the arm to natural causes, no good there. Yeah I guess. Izuku said disappointed. Why did you call her gorgeous? Why? Yankee asked, laughing at the young boy's innocence. She is beautiful. Long red hair, bright blue eyes, big boobs, wide waist, and a great ass. But best above all. She loves America. Oh I see. Izuku said blushing at the mention of Upai. He remembers how Yankee was a pervert at a level that rivaled Mineta. Ah kid, haven't you ever had a girl you were struck down by? Yankee asked. Quirk like yours I bet the ladies were throwing themselves at you. Well there was one. Izuku said sadly. Oh kid. Yankee said, patting his back. You gotta tell me all about her. Yankee said before frowning. Okay that sounded pedophilic, but tell me about her. Well she's really pretty. Izuku said, flushing red. She has really pretty eyes, pretty hair, and she's so nice, and smart I um. He was nervous talking about a girl. Ain't the just precious. Poor little guy's nervous about his crush. Yankee though. I am Izuku said, looking down, and sniffling. Yankee picked up on the sad reaction. Something wrong, little guy. Yankee asked. She's back in Japan being controlled. Izuku said, tearing up. Oh well Yankee said trying to think of something to make him feel better. We are now making our descent to Chicago Midway Airport, please fasten your seatbelts. The pilot said. Were you saved by the bell? Yankee though. Fasten your seatbelt kid, are coming in hot. You should be able to see the city if you look out the window. Izuku turned his head toward the window and saw hundreds of skyscrapers towering over the ground. Wow. I've never seen buildings that tall before. He beamed as the plane descended further. He could see cars moving to and from on the expressways and could even make out people as the plane came ever closer to the ground. He felt a thud as the plane landed on the runway still going very fast. The plane appeared to be going max speed as it slowly slowed down, allowing the plane to be driven towards a terminal to offload its passengers. Wee. 
Yankee said unbuckling Izuku. I'll go wake up your grumpy teacher. Eliciting a chuckle from the teenager. Yankee walked over to Eraser and let out a mighty burp into Eraserhead's face. Izuku burst out laughing as Izawa woke and nearly gagged from the putrid smell. We've landed Ulp Yankee cried as he saw Eraserhead's fist in his stomach. His eyes were glowing and his hair was floating, meaning he activated his quirk to punch Yankee so the kinetic force wouldn't reverse it on him. You disgusting slob. Azawa said glaringly. If you ever belch in my face again it will be your end. Oh whatever. Yankee said, standing back up. Anyways we landed. If you want to rest at the hotel, I'll take the boy to our healers and take him on a tour of the city and bring him back when we are done. Wow, do I feel like I'm going to regret leaving him? Eraser asked, folding his arms. Come on, I know I'm immature and obnoxious, but I didn't become the top hero in America by being stupid. Yankee said defending himself. Fine, getting out and about can keep the kid's mind off all the crap back home. He better be back by 10 p.m. at the latest. Azawa explained. Okay dad. Yankee laughed as he grabbed Midoriya from his seat and put him in his wheelchair. The three exited the plane onto the terminal where Yankee was immediately smothered by fans. It's Yankee. The crowd screamed as Yankee waved to his fans. USA. The Yankee slowly started chanting. USA. 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 The crowd joined in as a nearby bar tossed Yankee a can of Budweiser. He proceeded to open it and chug it as the crowd went wild. God I love this country. Yankee thought as people lined up to meet him. Hey oh you guys don't mind do you? Yankee asked Eraser and Midoriya. Go ahead, part of being a pro. Eraser had said. Well he was a well-known pro in Japan, he wasn't that famous in other parts of the world. He would often find himself plagued by fans asking for photos or autographs, though he was not as sociable as Yankee. About 20 minutes went by before Yankee walked back over. Sorry about that. Yankee said. It makes a lot of these people's day to get a photo. If you're done then can we leave? Eraser asked. Yeah. I just gotta contact a friend of mine. Yankee said. She can heal this little guy. Well there's some good news at least. Azawa said grateful that they wouldn't have to wait months for Midoriya to heal on his own. Is it Lady Liberty? Izuku excitedly asked Yankee to explain her quirk. Yup. Yankee said. She'll meet us at your hotel you'll be staying in. Let's head over to Arrival so we can hitch a ride out of here. The trio made their way through the airport, which took longer than it should have due to fans constantly wanting to talk to Yankee. They finally made it outside where a limo was waiting. Good to see you're back Yankee. A man in an American flag styled suit said. It's good to be back. Yankee said as he helped Midoriya into the limo. Izuku looked in the limo in awe. There were comfy couches, a fridge, and even a TV. Alrighty then. Yankee said as the three got settled in the car. Do you guys want something to eat or drink? We got some juice and snacks in the fridge. Can I have some juice? Izuku mildly requested. I'm fine. Eraser nodded back off to sleep. Here you go kid. Yankee said bringing a small carton of orange juice with a straw. Yankee held it at mouth level so Izuku could drink it. Where are we headed today? The driver asked from the driver's seat. Drake Hotel. Yankee said. The car pulled out of the airport and made its way to the hotel. Izuku looked out the window in awe as he saw all the people and buildings. Wow, it's so cool here. The boy exclaimed as they drove by the Sears Tower. I can't even see the top. How tall is it? About 1500 feet last I checked. Yankee said as Midoriya took in the sights. They went along the lakefront where Izuku looked out into the lake. I can't believe that's a lake. It's so huge. You would think it's an ocean. Izuku said. Always like swimming in Lake Michigan better than the ocean. Shit bites you in the ocean. Yankee laughed. I can't relax waiting for a shark to come and take a chunk out of my ass. We have arrived. The driver said as they pulled up to a large building. The three exited the car as Yankee handed the driver a wad of cash. Thanks again buddy. Yankee said as the driver drove off. The three walked in, but not before a group of teenage boys no older than Izuku saw Yankee. Hey Yankee. They yelled. Murica. Fuck ya. Yeah. Yankee replied as they cheered. The three quickly walked into an elevator to avoid delaying Midoriya's healing. I got you guys a suite, two bedrooms, and two bathrooms. Thanks Yankee, you didn't have to. Izuku smiled. Ah it's all good, the owner of this place gives me discounts since I stopped a robbery here a few years back. Yankee said as the elevator dinged indicating they were there. They walked out as Yankee escorted them to their room. Behold paradise. Yankee opened the door and Izuku opened his eyes in wonder, the living room alone was bigger than his entire apartment back home. Izuku then saw a woman sitting on the couch. Ah you're finally here. 
She said in a heavy southern accent. There's my honey. Yankee said walking up arms spread out for a hug. Back off perv, I'd let Muerto touch me before you. She said, as she stood up. Izuku's jaw dropped at the woman. She was taller than Yankee, and had a very curvaceous body with wide hips and long slender legs. She had bright red hair tied up in a bun behind her head with a brush of freckles on her cheeks. This the little guy you needed me to heal. She asked me to walk over to Izuku. Izuku gulped as she walked over to Izuku and knelt down. Wow he was right, you are really pretty. Izuku said before realizing what came out of his mouth. Wait. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh ain't you just the sweetest thing. She said, smiling at him before turning to Yankee and whispering in his ear. What the hell did you tell him about me? Nothing. I just said you were pretty. Yankee whispered back. No you probably went and told him how I got big boobs like you do to everyone. She whispered angrily before turning back to Izuku. He filled me in on what happened sweetie, I'm sorry to hear about everything. Thanks, I appreciate it. Izuku replied. I should be able to heal you, Ma Quirk lets me heal any damage or effects from any quirk related activity. You hurt yourself cause you overused your quirk so I'm pretty sure it might work. Just sit still and lem get you all patched up. Lady Liberty said as she placed her hands on his arms. Izuku felt a weird tingle flow through his broken limbs as his bones seemed to stitch themselves back together. It took about 30 seconds, but when she was done. Give him a try, see if it works. She said, Izuku slowly moved his fingers wanting to make sure it didn't hurt before he moved his whole arm. After his fingers moved he moved his palm before moving both his arms freely without pain. Wow, you're amazing. Izuku said happily. Such a gentleman, you sure know how to make a girl feel like a lady unlike some pigs around here. She said, shooting a dirty look at Yankee. Now let's get your legs all fixed up. She placed her hands on Izuku's thighs, which made him extremely nervous, given how close they were to a certain place. Oh I'm sorry sweetie. She said feeling guilty. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. She then placed her hands closer to his knees where Izuku felt the same tingly feeling as before. When she was done he very slowly got up from his chair to see if his legs could hold his weight. Once he stood up and saw it was safe to do so he began walking. It's so nice to walk again. Thanks so much Lady Liberty. Izuku smiled. No problem darling. She said as Izuku dropped to the ground to do push-ups and jumped up and down releasing all the pent-up energy. Thank you. As always said. No problem. She said, I don't think I caught your name. Eraserhead. As always said. This guy can erase people's quirks when he looks at them. Yankee explained. Well that's for sure handy. Wouldn't want to be your enemy. Lady Liberty said. Well now that you're all patched up kid, what say we go out to town? Yankee asked. For sure. Izuku said excitedly. Just get him back by 10, we need to leave early to meet Gran Torino in the morning. As always said. Wait what? Lady Liberty asked suddenly. Ah no we just met all, but you're not leaving the boy with him for the day are ya? She asked Izawa. I am, I've been taking care of the kid for the last week, I need to catch up on my rest. Eraser replied. Well I'm coming with. Ah can't have Yankee perverting the boy's mind Lady Liberty declared. Whatever, just keep him out of trouble and have him back by 10. As always said, as he walked to his bedroom. Come on kid. We're gonna have a fun night. Yankee said as the three left the hotel. My god what have I done? Eraser thought to himself leaving Midoriya with that degenerate lady. Back in Japan, Class 1A packed their bags for their trip. Man I this is gonna be awesome. Sito said. Never been out of the country. Don't forget why we are going. We have an important mission. Iida scolded. He's right, keep your head straight. Yayoi Rozu said, walking in her hero costume. The Kugo said upon seeing her. What was that supposed to mean? She asked angrily. You tell me not to call you a slut, but you dress like that in public. Bakugo said. Your tits are hanging out for fuck's sake. I don't want to dress like this. It makes my quirk work better because I have more access to my skin, you jerk. Yayoi Rozu screamed. It'd work best if there was no clothing at all. Mineta whispered to Kaminari who chuckled creepily only to be whacked by Jiro. Yeah sure whatever you say. Bakugo said. Well what about you? You show off your arms and Kirishima exposes his whole upper body. Why is it only bad when a girl does it? Yayoi Rozu yelled. Because we don't have private organs on our chests. Bakugo said bluntly. Why you Yayoi Rozu muttered. She had truly designed her costume with her quirk in mind. Now she was super self-conscious about it. Don't listen to him. It looks great. Mineta yelled. Yayoi Rozu for once actually appreciated Mineta's compliment though deep down she knew it was just one of his pervy fantasies. Enough. Iida yelled. If we are all ready we should be going to meet Kurajiri to teleport us. Yeah what we said. 
Siro replied. The 19 students made their way to the UA main hall where Kurajiri and All for One were waiting. I have been expecting you. Afo said. You know your mission, bring him back to me alive. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. They reply in unison. Good, are you ready Kurajiri? Afo asked his fellow villain. Yes, I have the coordinate locked in, all you have to do is walk through it. When you have him, phone me on the devices we gave you, and I will open a portal back. Kurajiri explained. I will only say this once more. Afo said. Bring him back to me alive, show up without him or with him dead will be met with consequences. This is your chance to prove your worth, don't mess it up. We won't let you down. Eid yelled. But I look forward to your return. Afo said, as the students made their way into the portal. It's 11.30 pm. Where the hell are they? Eraser had thought to himself looking at his watch. He had set an alarm for 10 pm to make sure Midoriya was back, but an hour and a half later they still had not returned. He had tried calling all three multiple times to no avail. If they aren't back in 20 minutes I'm going out looking for them. He soon heard the doorknob moving, indicating someone was trying to get in. Oh, Midoriya. You're my bestest good friend. He heard a voice he assumed to be Yankee say loudly. He was clearly inebriated. Figures. Eraser had said. Azuku, please marry me, you cutie. He heard a female voice cry. You gotta be kidding me. As always said, irritated. He expected this from Yankee, but not Lady Liberty, he had hoped she had more decorum than her colleague. After several failed attempts to open the door, he finally got up and opened it to see a horrifying sight indeed. Oh Mr. Eraser might. Izuku said, wobbling. I don't feel so good. Lady Liberty caught him and cradled him like a baby. It's okay. Mom is here. She said emotionally. Oh. My. God. As always said, flaring up in rage. Tell me you didn't. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.